going like sideways at someone, you know, like uh, going at someone at an angle, like not going out at them straight forward, you know, trying to be like uh, manipulative, something like that. I had a feeling it was something like that, or it was like a basketball or a billiards kind of reference. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Honestly, you should you should answer it differently every single time. <laughs> yeah. This video is brought to you by Tile. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music wherever it may be found and the people that make it, including my guest. And my guest today is a rapper and a producer who I met at local hotspot down in the Arts District of Las Vegas, 18 Bin, at a songwriter showcase that's hosted by Hal Savar every Thursday there. Up until recently, I was uh, live streaming those and doing reviews of them, but unfortunately, my personal life made it so that I can't do that anymore oh so there you go but definitely if you're in the area uh, swing by and check it out um he's the creator of trey flip music and his single covid kill is out now please welcome to the channel joey trey hi joey what's going on brother how you doing oh driven living the dream dreaming the life i don't know welcome welcome <laughs> mm. by the way if you want to be like joey and be on the featured on the channel whether reviewed interviewed or both Hit me up using my email address down below or by clicking the Room 6 social media link. That's also where you'll find what else I'm up to online, ways you can support the channel, like buying merch, and, um, you know, the like, the share, and the subscribe button, all those YouTube things. Um, so speaking of which, stick around. I think we're going to be seeing uh, something like a music video or something from Joey after this interview. So stick around for that. Um, awesome. Real quick, Joey, I have I have some kind of usual interview questions that I'll 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 ask you throughout this thing, but I also have some more kind of personalized ones. And the first one I like to start off with, OG Room Sixers know this one, it's near and dear to my heart. What is that moment you remember first going, I want to do that? Um, probably rapping with my friends, skateboarding and smoking weed when I was like 14 or 15. Um, I think it was just the kind of the social aspect the camaraderie and the bonding that goes with um, spitting rhymes with your friends and bagging on each other. <laughs> and um, nice. ever since then, like I just couldn't stop, man. I, I wanted to, I want, I just, all I wanted to do, and it's always been like a itch at the back of my mind, you know, like I'm trying to like always create a schedule so that I can get all my stuff done as an adult. So I can spend the rest of my time just cracking out on music. Nice. Yeah. And that is honestly the hardest part about being a musician and, trying to also be like a grown-up <laughs> is, is is figuring out where can I carve out the time for what I want to do for, as opposed to what I have to do to be who I am. I, I, I've said this to more than one downhearted like fast food worker in the drive-thru because I've been that guy. And, and I'd be like, remember, this is not who you are. This is just what you have to do to be who you are. Right. Yep. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So from there, uh, you, how long have you been Joey Trey? Like, the, how long has the have you been putting yourself out there as Joey Trey? Um, about since I was like 15 years old, I got the nickname of Joey Trey because I was skateboarding at the skate park and I would do tray flips all the time. Uh, well, then in that case, you must have a few shows under your belt. You've you've done a few shows in the past. Um, I, I just started actually performing my music. Um, this year. So I've only done a bunch of op open mics and a couple shows where I was on the set list, but it wasn't really my show. So I'm just beginning this stuff. I've, I've been making music uh, by myself for like 16 years. And um, the skateboarding stuff was just like how me and my friends like uh, worked out together pretty much. It's a form of exercise, you know what I mean? It's And it's a great way of bonding too. Definitely, definitely. Um... And that's what I was really going after was how long have you actually been performing in front of people? So with that, oh. with, with that, what's your favorite show memory? Like the one where, where the, if somebody's like, what's it like performing in front of people? You, you would pull out this one time, you know, and it could be something really good or you checked off your, your rapper wish list or, or things went way off the rails. Um, I was performing at the shag room at um, the Virgin hotel 
and um, I finished my song, and the crowd when were were, were really uh, they were really loud, and uh, I I didn't expect that because I was just so deep into the song, and then I did my next song, and they were even they were just as loud, if not louder, and I just it was just really reassuring to to hear them like my music as well as me doing it for me i wasn't doing it to hear them cheer i was doing it to make myself happy and like hopefully people rocked with it you know what i mean and i was just trying to like because if i if i focus on the crowd people are doing a whole bunch of different things and it like it brings me off focus so like if i'm able to perform but focus on you know how it makes me feel instead of like you know trying to make other one everyone else happy um, it was a really liberating experience because as a people pleaser, bro, I've been, a, you know, I've been trying to, trying to nip that shit in the ass, bro. It's hard not to be a people pleaser when you grew up trying to make your parents happy, your grandparents happy, and they just never saw anything you saw as good enough. So to try to do something for you and not necessarily, you know, I do care if people like my music, but it's not the end result. You know, I'm doing this because it makes me happy, you know? So to have that happen at the Shag Room and everyone was vibing with it and I was just doing it for me, I was like, this is fucking a dream come true here, dude. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. And um, I know that the Shag Room puts on some really killer shows. Um, from there, I wanted to ask, how would you compare the songwriting process between the Sad B and COVID Kill? The Sad B. Oh, on my SoundCloud. Oh, wow. Um, that is a uh, super 808 heavy. I love uh, producing with heavy 808s. Um, but uh, the COVID Kill song is more of a melodic, uh, cohesive kind of song. It doesn't. It's not 808. You know triumphant it's more like everything's coming together you hear the high end and the mid-range and um i worked with uh kyle Owees. Uh, he works over at the hideout recording studio and um he helped me record that song over there and it, you know it wouldn't have came out as good as it did if it wasn't for him so right on i was really more like the songwriting process in terms of just you know oh sorry bro. You wrote... no it's fine that's it was kind of a vague question but um I was just wondering, was writing the sad B a completely different Joey Trey than the one that wrote Kill Vid Kill? Absolutely. Um, when I have to make beats, it's a totally different thing. I'm not worried about uh, syllable structure or like stanzas. And, uh, you know, writing, writing music as far as like with lyrics is completely different. I have to switch modes. Um, and I feel like I, I really like the songwriting process with like uh, the sad B or any other kind of beat making process. It's um, it's a lot more like uh, what's coming to my mind. The adjective to explain it is druggy. Like it's it's kind of like a lot of dopamine is released during the beat making process, the songwriting process, like during ra rapping, like the lyric process, like it's still there, but you got to work a lot harder. Like it's a physical process of spitting the lyrics and getting it right the way that you want it to. The beat making process, I mean, it's just a couple clicks away. So it's a lot less effort and like, it's a lot, you know, you still get the drug. It's insane. Definitely, definitely. Um, and. I always like to ask, like, I, if I find a song from somebody's discography way in the way back in the day, I like to see, like, what's changed in your in who's who's writing the music. So, um, from there, wanted to ask, what's ne what's coming up on the horizon for uh, for Joey Trey? Um, bearing in mind that this video is probably not going to post until end of July. Well, the music video for what's it called? Um, Angle Shots, my, my newest song. Um, I just got the video back from the videographer yesterday. I'm, we're going to do a little bit of a re-edit and then I have to go to the mixing engineer and get that song. Uh, just, a, just a couple tweaks. Uh, it's pretty much done, but uh, that should be out um, pretty much like at the end of July or maybe after July. So right after this video drops, it should be coming out. Excellent, excellent. And speaking of music videos, stick around. Like I said, we're going to be seeing the music video for COVID Kill, which is out now after this interview. Okay. Love to see you down in the comments and, you know, what you think about it and, and you know, what else you want to hear from Joey. So uh, from there, I have a note here and I'm trying to remember what the note means. It says five years, parentheses, 2015. 
Does that mean anything to you? Um, no, not not anything that comes to my mind. Cool, cool. Glad I wasted time on that. Awesome. <laughs> no idea why I wrote that note. I think I started a note, started a question, and then got distracted or something. But um, all right, on. Um, yeah, I think this is as good a time as any. Stick around. We're gonna take a quick break here while I get, collect my thoughts and uh, maybe get some some room six whiskey in me. But uh, stick around. We're gonna hear a message from future Josh. So, booze break. And now a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. It's a sad fact for musicians on the road or just playing at their local bar, but gear gets stolen sometimes because people. Fortunately, there's a way to help get it back. With Tile, you have a backup plan when something needs to be found. Just tap Find in the Tile app. Watch the Tile detector's green rings fill in as you get closer to them. Tile also has lost and found stickers with a QR code full of your contact info. That can be scanned by whoever finds it. If you lose something when you're out and about, Tile can help you locate it. View its most recent location on a map, and it'll show you the last time it was with you or the last time your Tile app was able to locate it. You can also tap Notify when found, so the Tile network, which is every phone running the Tile app and their network extenders, can help locate the lost item. Each device on the network is able to help locate Tile trackers and send location updates to your Tile app. Anonymously, of course. And with Premium Protect Plan, Tile will even reimburse you if something can't be found. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get peace of mind and save some cash. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Tile for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down below. You'll save some money. I'll get some money. It's a win-win, baby. Just in case you're joining us, what are you doing jumping in the middle of a video? This is Joey Trey, rapper and producer, local Vegas boy, and uh, we're talking about all sorts of weird things, including how I don't apparently know how to write a complete question on my, my notes. <laughs> but we got a couple more questions, and then we're going to see that music video for COVID Kill, which is out now. And make sure you use his social media links that I've put down there so you can follow when he drops the uh, the music video and the, the single for, um, what was Angle the shots. Angle song? Angle Shots, that's right. And uh, I'm glad you said angle shots because I, I was like, is it supposed to be angel shots? Because, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's angle shots. You know, the whole bartender a angel shot thing. And so um, uh, that actually, you know what? Let's talk about angle shots. Why angle shots? So um, that song is co written with my friend Amy. And at first, I called it Amy's song because she wrote half of the chorus. So I sang the chorus and I sent her a video like months ago and she's like, oh, this is awesome. And I'm like, thanks. And I've just been fucking with it since. And so I called it uh, Amy's song for a long time. And then I asked her one day, I was like, yo, I never asked you if like you're cool with that. Like, do you are like, this is kind of your song, too. Like, I want you to be OK with the name. And she's like, actually, I would love to change it to something else. And so we, we wanted to we wanted it to be like something, something more, um, you know, mysterious, you know, like. There's a reason why you're uh, like kind of like why you're asking right now is why she wanted it to be called angle shots so that people were curious about it like what the fuck does that mean and really um to, to us and, and to her it's about um like going like sideways at someone you know like uh, going at someone at an angle like not going out at them straight forward you know trying to be like uh, manipulative something like that I had a feeling it was something like that, or it was like a basketball or a billiards kind of reference. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> Honestly, you should you should answer it differently every single time. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take your advice on that one, bro. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So okay, a couple more questions here. Wanna ask, um, what's the dream show for for Joey Trey? What's the the dream lineup or the tour that you want to go on? Like what's, what is the, the someday? Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the artist yellow wolf and I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Eminem and stuff like that, but um, to be able to Eminem. perform along. <laughs> Eminem. <laughs> um, I like to do something like that. Um, 
uh, let's see, it's it's kind of conflicted, bro, because to go to go on tour with them would be a dream, but also to have my own band, bro. And like, I really want to do something like Head PE. Like that would be sick to me, dude. That that would be a dream come true as well. So, one of those two. Ah, good old local boys, Head PE. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Right on. Um, last question. You made it. Yay. Oh, so, awesome. awesome. Stick around. We're going to see that video for COVID kill. Um, it, you OG room sixers know what's coming. This one is also near and dear to my heart. I love this question. It reveals a lot about people and, and why they do this horrible thing called music. So we're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question. And we're going to talk to little Joey. Okay. And by little Joey, I really, what we're doing is we're talking to new musicians, new rappers, people who are like, how do I be like you, you know, that kind of stuff. So imagine you have a time machine and you can go back and you can ask yourself, or you could tell yourself one thing that you wish someone had told you before you started down the road, trying to be a rapper and, and, and all that. What is one thing you wish you could have told your, yourself then? Um, when you when you get the feeling when you when you get that feeling that like you can't help but uh love so much and uh you're not sure if it's ready it's ready bro it's it's put it out there pretty much talking to myself that like um you know when i was really really young i never you know I, I never thought I could do what I would do when I was like 20 or 22 years old. I was making some incredible fucking music and I was so self-conscious about it. And so if I knew like, yo, trust the feeling that you get from your music, bro, you got it, bro. You, you can't make everyone happy. So just do it, bro. You got this. I couldn't say it any better. And as on a personal note, I totally agree with you. I had something happen recently. Um, we both know Hal Savar, the host of the songwriter showcase where we met. And he's heard me perform my music occasionally. And uh, he put together a little Spotify playlist of all the local songwriter showcases or songwriters from the showcase over the years that have music out there, including me. And a song that I had put on my first album that was kind of just a filler song, like I, I was never happy with how I did it, but it was there. He said, that's my favorite song you do. And I never perform it because it was always to me like a meh. So now he's got me thinking. It's like, well, wait a minute. Because this guy, is a he's a proficient songwriter. He writes a lot. And every song he does, like, people just jive with. Just go, you know, just love it. So now he's got me thinking, like, well, maybe I was, maybe I, I should have trusted my intuition. Maybe I, when I didn't, when I was just like, this, this is just what I want to, okay, boom, it's a song. Instead of me agonizing over it, like I did with most of the other album, most of the other tracks, I mean. So, yeah, trust your intuition. Good one. Uh, and with that, thank you for watching. Thank you for being on the channel, Joey. And stick around. We're going to see that music video for COVID Kill, and then we'll catch you in the outro. Uh, I guess temporarily say goodbye, Joey. Peace yeah. out, everyone.
outfit for real, but no stress. I'm blessed. I still have three meals every day. Cannabis, I get a dope deal delivery. Services and mixed with mobile. I'm throwing free shows. No, I'm not Shaquille O'Neal. I'm holding out. See, no, that's how I seal the deal. Yeah, I feel the electricity like an eel. This shit is pretty catchy. You're on my reel. Cinematic, I'm lying. I'm not an addict. I'm fanatic. Baby, sitting like an ass. I never pass it. Board is hell and I wanna get there. So I go to a spot where my homeboys chill. Yeah, chill. No one's there. My head, I tilt. Yeah. Guess they're all scared of that COVID kill. Yeah, board is hell and I wanna get ill. So I go to a spot where my homeboys chill. Yeah, no one's there. My head, I tilt. Guess they're all scared of that COVID kill. Yeah, guess they're all scared of that COVID kill. Yeah, I got no more weed, bitch, I sold it. I can't wait to get out of my home and be alone. Work on my songs, I say that I owned it. I want to thank Joey Trey for coming on the channel and sharing that amazing music video for COVID Kill. It was a great interview, and I hope that you enjoyed. If you want to know more about Joey, hit those social media links down below. And while you're at it, give him a follow, a like, and all those things. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. And if you want to subscribe, click over there. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not rap at all, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Joey. Peace out, everyone. Ba da ba ba da bum. <laughs> bum.